Guys, we're going to jump into Philippians 3 today, and I'm going to try and just do a short video pulling out some of the themes of this chapter. But one of the themes I would say is really, obviously we know this whole book has a theme of joy, and in this chapter it's really about the joy of knowing Christ. Paul starts by saying, rejoice in the Lord. You know, he's the only one who's unchanging. He's the only one who's ultimately worthy. Whatever else you're tempted to rejoice in is lesser than this truth that rejoicing in the Lord is the thing that's going to see you through this life. It's the thing that's going to never let you down. Paul says, look out for the dogs who, uh, look out for those evildoers who mutilate the flesh. Dogs was a derogatory term that many Jewish people would have been familiar with using in regard to the Gentiles. But here, Paul's flipping it on his head and he's actually calling some of the Jewish lawmakers dogs for their determination to be legalistic about who can come towards Christ. But he says, um, we are the circumcision, we worship by the spirit, we glory in Christ and we put no confidence in the flesh. Those are the three characteristics of somebody who truly is pursuing God. But he explains that, you know, I've been on the other side of this. I've been a part of that legalistic conversation and it brought me no fruit. And in verse five, he talks about the sort of flesh um, qualifications that he has, the fact that he's from the right tribe, that he's circumcised. In verse six, he talks about the decision qualifications that he made in his pursuit of what he felt to be righteousness and holiness as he persecuted the church. But he says these famous verses, whatever I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. And, you know, he's saying, um, I counted it all as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Again, I know I keep saying this, but let's remember he wrote this in prison and he's glorying in the fact that now he's in the best place he's ever been. Despite having all of those qualifications, all of those stature, recognizable marks of honor, he says, now I, uh, I count all of those things as rubbish that I might gain Christ and be found in him. And so in this situation as a traveling speaker, somebody reliant on other people for their income, somebody who's currently imprisoned and has experienced so much persecution, he knew that it was the richest part of his life to this point because he'd gained Christ. So I think that's really beautiful. Um, the joy of knowing him, knowing the power of his resurrection, that I might share in his sufferings, becoming like him, that by any possible means I might attain the resurrection that he's attained. So um, just like there's a deep joy in Paul's words, even though his circumstances were nothing to be celebrated. And he goes on to say again, stunning verses that I love, not that I've already obtained this or that I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but I forget what lies behind and I strain forward. I press on toward the goal of the upward call. I love this, um, this wording here. There's so much around the ancient Greek church that really would have placed value and importance in uh, athletics, sporting activities. We know that these guys, you know, the Olympics, there was a great uh, celebration of sporting ability. And so Paul takes that analogy and he uses it to encourage them to press on in their race, in their goal, straining forward. It's a very athletic imagery. And we know how that feels, don't we? I do know how it feels sometimes to be straining forward and reaching forward uh, for the goal ahead of us, but not in our own flesh, not in our own confidence, not because of the things we do, but because of the decisions we make, the things that we choose to glorify, the things that we choose to worship, that will help us to press on towards the goal and towards the call, the upwards call that we find in him. So um, he finally goes on to remind them that our citizenship is in heaven. You know, people in this region would have taken great confidence in their Roman citizenship because that was a, a past that got you a lot of places in these days. But he reminds them that um, our citizenship is in heaven and we should live as such. He says, be aware of those who walk as enemies of the, of the cross of Christ. So he's warned them about legalism in the first half of the chapter. Here at the end of the chapter, he really warns them about lib liberalism, um, having no rules. 
Their end is destruction, their God is their belly. They glory in their shame with their mind set on earthly things. You know, the, the counter to legalism is not being liberal about everything and doing whatever you want. The counter is remembering that our citizenship is in heaven and God is transforming us to be like him as we press towards that goal. Don't be uh, too trusting in what you have around you right now, but await the promise of Christ, you know, that he's coming for all of us. And I think there's just really great reminder here to find joy in knowing him, not in our circumstances, not in the things around us. There are so many amazing verses in this chapter. If you have a favorite one or one that stood out for you, then please do share it.